With the return of Azir, the ascended god emperor of ancient Shurima, and Zeras, an ancient and powerful ascended magus who seeks to bring all of the Shuriman Empire to heal, a time of great change is upon Shurima. With Zerath's dark power spreading over the land, Azir would seek to unite his people and gather powerful allies in a clash that would determine the fate of Shurima and perhaps all of Runeterra. However, in a clash of ancients, perhaps the linchpin that decides this battle is not the old god warriors or powers long forgotten to the sands. Perhaps the fate of Shurima lies in the hands of one girl who through coincidence or an act of fate was blessed with the power to bend stone to her will and the pure heart to use the power for good. Talia, the stone weaver. To understand Talia's part in the grand scheme of fate, we must first look back at her origins. Born to a tribe of nomadic weavers, Talia spent much of her childhood herding goats and aiding her tribe. Her future would have been filled with much of the same, becoming either a weaver or a shepherd for her village, but fate would have other plans. The first signs of Talia's power would be seen, as strange as it sounds, because of a lost little goatling. The poor little goat would find itself climbing onto a rock wall, but unable to make its way down. The first instance we see of her power would also be the first we see of her heroic heart, as her desire to save the lost goatling triggers her powers, bringing down the rock wall and the goatling on top of her. She would soon be saved by her father, yet fear of her unknown power would have her keep it a secret from her family. She would keep her power secret for years, yet such powers can't be hidden for long. When children of the tribe are old enough, they take part in a coming of age ceremony. There they would dance under the full moon, the manifestation of the great weaver, a Shurima deity of fate. Perhaps then it was all too appropriate that her powers would manifest yet again, lifting a massive sharp rock into the air during her dance. The confusion of her people broke her concentration, which caused the stone to fall, almost killing her mother, but leaving only a cut on her face. The destruction she caused and the wound she left on her mother's face would see her retreat away, again fearful of her powers. Once comforted by her father, she would dance again. This time, she embraced her power and weaved ribbons of stone. Once the dance was over, she would find that despite her terrifying power, her entire tribe would stand with her. However, once it became apparent that her tribe could not teach her to wield her power, she set out determined to not endanger her people with her stone weaving. So she said goodbye and began her journey, heading west towards the peaks of Targon, her natural connection with the rock drawing her to the mountains. At the northern edge of Shurima, she would run into a troop of Noxian soldiers. Once they discovered her power, they were eager to have her. She was told that in Noxus, she would be given a teacher. Having been raised in a tribe where everyone cared for each other and everyone was trustworthy, she was unprepared for the false smiles and deceit of Noxian dignitaries. She was soon taken to the capital city of the Noxian Empire, Noxus Prime, where many took interest in her powers. Yet the one that made the best case was a young officer who offered to take her somewhere she could train her powers without harming others. The young officer sailed her to Ionia, and it was soon apparent that they intended to make her into a weapon of war. She was ordered to bury the sleeping people in their homes or be thrown overboard and drown. This is where we would see another instance of the purity of Talia's heart. The threat of death, the brutal culture shock of Noxus Prime, and the stress of being so far from home, surrounded by Noxian soldiers. Despite all that, she refused the officer's demands, so she was thrown overboard, left to drown. She would soon wash up on the shore and begin her journey through Ionia. While running from Noxian soldiers, she would meet Yasuo, an agile swordsman who wields the power of air against his enemies. Their first meeting, however, was less than ideal. Talia would unwittingly cause an avalanche, burying the swordsman under ice and snow and almost killing him. Luckily, she managed to save him, and upon realizing that she needed guidance, Yasuo agreed to train her. Sadly, her time with Yasuo would be short-lived, as words of Azir's resurrection would soon reach her. During Azir's time, slavery was commonplace in Shurima. The rumors painted the god emperor as a tyrant who wanted to rebuild his empire and reintroduce slavery to Shurima. And so, Talia would have to part with Yasuo and return to Shurima to protect her people. Talia believes that Azir is a tyrant and might be looking to enslave her people. So you might be asking, why? Why would she side with Azir as his secret weapon against Zerath? Well, for one, Azir had no intention of reintroducing slavery. Before his failed ascension, Azir had intended to free all the slaves. This knowledge, however, was not commonplace as he did not divulge his plans to many of his people. 
Secondly, in the Bloodline storyline, Talia witnessed Zerath and his minions invade and destroy the city of Akura. After witnessing such malice against the people, the heroic Talia would surely take sides against Zerath. It was even hinted that she saved Nasus from being buried alive by Zerath, despite knowing that the god warrior was loyal to Azir. However, in Echoes of Stone, Talia would hear the screams etched into the stones of the citizens who lost their lives in the cataclysm following Azir's failed ascension. The shock and fear led her to believe that Azir should not be trusted with the lives of the people of Shurima. In truth, Azir's failed ascension and the death of thousands were due to Zerath's betrayal. Zerath had used his dark power to attempt to steal the power of ascension, originally meant for Azir. The wild magic energy released as a result would destroy the capital city of Shurima and kill many of its people in the process. Once Talia is made aware of this fact, surely she'll side with Azir against Zerath, especially with the threat the ascended mages poses. Now that the question of why Talia would help Help Azir has been answered, the next question is how? How could a mortal significantly impact a battle of the Ascended, especially one that's as powerful as Zerath? Firstly, in the events of Bloodline, it has been seen that the Ascended have some sort of special bond with each other. Zerath and Azir can sense that the other is alive, Nasus can sense Azir's presence, and Zerath can track Sivir, a descendant of Azir, due to the blood she shares with Azir. However, when Talia confronted Nasus, he was completely unaware that she had powers until he witnessed her actually weaving stone. Sometimes all that's needed to change the tide of a heated battle is an unknown element, especially if that element is a giant boulder. Without being ascended or having the blood of the ascended running through her veins, Zerath will be unable to track Talia, which makes her the perfect secret weapon. Another reason Talia might be a secret weapon is the sarcophagus. When Zerath's treachery was revealed, Renekton and Nasus attempted to seal Zerath away in a magical sarcophagus. Unfortunately, the Ascended Magus was simply too powerful, and he shattered the sarcophagus, releasing himself. However, the shards and chains of the sarcophagus remained bound to him. While it has yet to be explicitly confirmed, looking at Zerath's art, it can be seen that the shards of the sarcophagus are made of stone. While it may be too much to assume that Talia could trap and defeat Zerath all by herself, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to say that the magical stone shards embedded in Zerath may provide her the opportunity to hurt or at the very least hinder the ascended mages. Perhaps enough so that Azir or one of his allies like Nasus could deal the decisive blow and put an end to Zerath. Not only that, but the shards embedded in Zerath may provide not just an advantage of might, but also knowledge. In Echoes of Stone, it has been shown that the stones, in a way, speak to Talia. The extent of this facet of her powers has yet to be revealed. However, it is not impossible to believe that the shards embedded in Zerath could speak to her, perhaps enlightening her on whatever plans the Ascended Magus may be brewing. And in war, knowledge can be the difference between victory and defeat. While Talia might not be the most powerful being on Runeterra, she definitely has a wellspring of power within her, and how deep that goes? Who can say? All that can be said is that with her power and her desire to protect her people, she will undoubtedly play a part in that battle. Whether that involves facing off against Zerath or simply protecting those she loves, only time will tell.